Hey guys, good morning to you. Jungle Jerry here with Tiki 71. It was 37 degrees first thing this morning, so that tells me it is time to start the palm protection procedures for some of our more tender palm trees like the Pendo Palm and the Washingtonia Robusta there. These palm trees are actually cold hardy down to around 10 to 5 degrees. We are going to get some nights where it gets close to zero, maybe a little below that. Back uh, in February when everybody got hammered, we actually got down to minus eight and the palm protection really does work here. I've got multiple layers of protection that I'm going to show you today. Uh, I have done a video previously on the smaller palm protection barrels. Uh, I will put a link to that up above. But today we're going to use heat cable, we're going to use C9 Christmas lights, and make sure you're using the incandescent ones, not the LEDs. The incandescent bulbs are actually going to put out some heat for you and light inside of the boxes when it gets cold. Been doing some other things around here as well. I've got uh, most of my banana trees up, uh, chopped off the, uh, the heads of the the leaves and I've got to trim up the roots. I'm going to dry store those. Uh, that worked pretty good last year. Next uh, spring I'm actually going to plant all of the banana trees in the ground because the ones that uh, that I dug holes for the buckets or the, the pots and just put them in the ground they did not grow as well as the ones in ground. So everything will go in the ground next year and they'll come back to life then and uh, when you store your bananas by the way make sure you trim the roots off, get the dirt off, uh, wrap them in newspaper, put them in some cardboard boxes, and just put them in a cool, dry place, and they'll be good to go next spring. So now, let's get to it with the palm trees. Now, last year, I took house insulation board, some nice thick stuff, and I just taped it up around the, uh, the uh, Pendo and the Washingtonia, uh, along with that other protection, and it worked pretty good. The one problem I have with just taping it up around them and then using some straps and some tie-downs in the ground to help hold them in the ground is when we get really strong winter winds and the ground gets wet, uh, the winds can push on the boxes and actually pull those anchors out of the ground. And so I'm gonna take care of that this year. I got me some treated two by fours. I'm actually gonna build some solid boxes around the palms uh, today. And uh, then I'll cut these down onto the uh, two by fours and they won't go anywhere. Ugh. And so the first thing I'm gonna do today, I've got some, uh, yellowing lower branches. I'm going to go ahead and take these. Be careful with the Washingtonias and the Pendos. They do have armament on the uh, on the stems there, so it's a good idea to wear gloves. But for these lower ones, I'm going to actually leave some sections jetting off. That way it will actually be able to hold my, uh, my uh, Christmas lights a little bit better. And I'll clean it up in the spring and all that. But we're going to get these lower ones cut off and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next oh darling I'm sorry believe me it hurts me a lot more than it hurts you I'm so sorry I'm gonna come around now and make sure that there's no leaves or debris uh, that can tend to get stuck in here I don't want anything uh, sitting in there and molding because the box has a tendency to hold moisture so I'm just going to make sure I don't have any of that stuff in there. Now I'm at a point now where I can get these fronds uh, put up because I want them out of the way of the box. And I really don't want them touching the box at all because the box on the outside very well may freeze and I don't want any damage that way. So now I'm going to get the fronds put up. For the fronds, I'm actually going to use some of this uh, construction style netting. And I'm just going to go around and gather those fronds, wrap them around with this, tie it off. I'll cut this down, uh, tie it off with some uh, jute string, and we will have that part of it done. And I will say, bringing these fronds up around the Mara stem, which is that center stem where all of your growth comes from on palm trees, is gonna, gonna help hold some of that heat in uh, once we get the lights going and the heat cable as it rises. It'll tend to wanna stay in that area or it'll concentrate, so that will be good for it as well. But now the fun begins. This is so much fun doing this because what I really need is two or three of me uh, to hold one side. Sometimes I may have to just tie off on one of these to get it started. It ain't gonna be pretty, folks. Fat man wrapping up a palm tree. <laughs> we'll see if we can't make her work here. In order to help gather the fronds, I'm going to use a bungee at the base to kind of help bring them up and then when I 
when I gather the rest of the fronds, it'll be a whole lot easier. I'm going to come around from the back side like so and hook on like a this. That's here. Well, <laughs> I hooked myself pretty good and I hooked that. Okay. Lots of fun. Barrel of fun here. Okay. Now that I got her hooked, I'll just slide it right up here. Middle. <laughs> you <laughs> we'll hook on to one of your branches here, one of your big thick ow, ow. And ready for heat cable lights and building a box. One of the nice things about rigging up your palm trees and tropicals with lighting uh, for mood lighting in the summertime evenings is in the fall you can actually unplug this plug in your thermal cube and boom you've already got your uh, your power run out to your uh, trees so Now, since I have this in a raised bed, I'm going to put some burlap uh, over the top of the heat cable and the mulch, and I'm going to drape it down over the raised bed, and then I'll build that box around it. So now we're going to plug in our C9 Christmas lights, the incandescent ones, and run them around the base and then up the, uh, up the trunk. What I'm doing now is prepping some three inch by nine screws and some one inch washers. Those washers are going to help hold the styrofoam board in place. If I just use screws, of course, it would tear right out. This is going to give it some holding power and hopefully not tear out. We need to get them really secured well because if the winds come along and pick up any edge, it will basically peel it off. So. Well, guys, that's about a, the gist of it. I'm uh, I'm gonna go all the way around, and then I'll uh, I've already got the top cut out. If you don't, you can just put it up there and make a mark, and uh, take a uh, utility knife and cut that thing off. And uh, do be careful when you're putting these screws in. If you go too far in, it's gonna crush your styrofoam board. You don't want to do that. I can come back through with some tape on some of those areas where I gave it a little too much Mad Dog. But uh, yeah, that's going to work. I'm going to finish it up and I got another one to do. And I want to thank you guys for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this, found it informative. If you have any questions, post them down in the comments below. And we will see you in the next video. Kool-Aid Maluna. Bye-bye, Palms.